Welcome back. I'm going to go through each of the three functions that you could have designed in order. You should pay attention because even though you might not have designed all these functions, you can learn something from my discussion of each of the three functions. So let's first look at the player function. I want to focus on the examples and template that you should have used. The examples that you have written should number at least five. You should write at least five examples. And here's why. There are five situations that this function has to deal with. The player might move left. The player might move right. The player might try to shoot a bullet and succeed because there's no current bullet flying. The player might try to shoot a bullet and fail because there is already a bullet flying, so there's no more bullet available. And finally, the player might hit a key that's not recognized. They might just hit a random key like Z or whatever, but that is a possible key event, and we still have to deal with that, probably by not doing anything. So these are five different situations and we need to make sure to, when we write examples to include every situation. So here I have an example where the player hits the left key. By the way, if you like a different key, like the letter A, that's fine. Here I'm just using the arrow key left. And here's a situation for right. Uh, I'm choosing the space bar to be the fire key. And uh, in this third example, uh, the firing does succeed because in W1, the bullet uh, is none. And in W2, the world has a bullet that is a poison, so firing has no effect. And finally, if someone hits a key that's none of the above, like Z, then uh, again, that key has no effect. Okay, so be sure that you have at least five examples. If you wrote five, maybe you have enough, like these five are enough. Uh, if you wrote only three or four, then you did not write enough examples. Okay, so that's for examples for the player function. Let's talk a little bit about the template. Basically, what we're doing is to process the key event because we're going to do something different depending on what the key event is. Now, there are lots of key events. Key event is basically a data definition that's an enumeration. It's just that there are so many keys on the keyboard. So this enumeration is kind of big, and so the template is kind of big. In principle, if you're processing a key event, you could be doing something different depending on what key it is. But really, in our case, there are only three keys that are special, and I chose left, right, and the space bar. And we could actually make the template shorter using that knowledge about what our function is going to do. Um, if we're going to only deal with left, right, and space bar especially, let me move those three cases of the count to the top, like this. And then all the other cases of the count we expect to deal with in the same way. So like this dot dot dot, and this dot dot dot, and this dot dot dot, we expect all of them to be the same. So I'm just going to replace all of those cases by a single else case, which is necessary. If you forgot the else case, that is not correct. But as long as you have the else case, you don't have to write the case for up differently for the case for seven or Z or whatever. So I'm just going to take those cases and replace all of them by a single else case. Okay, this is a good start for the template for player. Uh, there's something else that we need to do though. We need to rename the template to have the correct name of the function, and we need to add the extra world input to the template. So um, remember that the world, W, is a structure. So um, we might well want to use the world in the answer part of each of those cases. One way to express that in a template is to include W in the inventory. So instead of just dot, 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 we could include the word W in the dot, dot, dot to remind ourselves that, hey, we might want to use W. 
if you want to be even more detailed, you could remember that W is itself a structure. So the template for a structure would decompose that structure into its constituent fields. There are three constituent fields here. They are world invaders W, world player W, and world bullet W. Let me split the line. Right, so this will be a really detailed template for player. And we could actually do the same thing for uh, the other cases of the count. Okay, I'm not going to do the same thing for the last case for the count because I actually know that the case of else, when someone hits a key like Z, we are just going to return the same world as we started with because it should not affect the world. Uh, one last thing about what it means to follow the template though. When you get to writing the definition of this player function in step five of the design recipe, you might realize that we have to deal with the space bar with another count because, uh, well, whatever key you choose for firing the bullet, so here I chose the space bar, how the function deals with the space bar depends on whether there's already a bullet, right? If there's already a bullet, like in this case W2, um, then no further bullet should be fired, okay? So the right-hand side in the space bar case or whatever firing case you have, you know, should have another count that distinguishes between the case where the bullet is a noun, and that's a case where we actually fire a bullet, and the case where the bullet is a poison, in which case we don't want to fire a bullet. In fact, we should just not do anything and return the same war as we got. So that's an inner count, and that's definitely one way to follow the template. Uh, so remember, in the template, this part is basically just dot, 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 maybe with some additional inventory. And one way to follow the template is to fill in the dot, dot, dot with an additional count. But that's not the only way to follow the template. It would be also fine if you say, look, you know, if someone hits a space bar and we already have a bullet, then the world does not change. If someone hits a random key like Z, then the world does not change. So this case, of not changing the world, and this other case of not changing the world are actually very similar. It would be nice if we only have one case, and you could combine these two cases if you could combine these two counts into one count. One way to do that is to use the AND operation. If we could check in the outer count not only whether the key is a space bar but also whether in addition the bullet is a noun and here again i'm using the end operation to combine two booleans into one boolean then all the other cases including the case when someone tries to fire a bullet, but there's already a bullet, so the bullet doesn't fire, and someone hits a random key, these two cases become the same, and we'll be able to combine the two counts and the two cases. So what I show you right here is another way to follow the template. It doesn't look like it's following the template, because what is this end here? What is this now huh, here? If we're just going to process a key event, shouldn't every condition in the count look like a equality comparison between the key event input and a particular key? Well, yes, but what we really care about when we follow the template is the logical progression of the program. So even if you're not using count literally like what the template has written, it's still okay. Be sure that you're following the logic of the template. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to actually follow the template literally. But you know what I wrote here is also okay. It will also count as from the template. And I think you would agree that with the help of the five examples that we have written and the more detailed template that we have come up with, it's relatively easy to write the player function. Let's move on to the second function that you might have designed. This function is called hitha, and it takes two inputs, a maybe, posit, and a posit. 
First, let's look at how many examples are enough. You should write examples for every situation. And in this function, there are at least three situations. So you should have at least three examples. First of all, maybe there's no bullet. If there's no bullet, there's no way it hits anything. That's one situation. Secondly, maybe there is a bullet, but it's too far. That's another way for the bullet to not hit the invader. Finally, maybe the bullet does hit the invader because it is close enough to the invader. So you should have at least three examples. These three examples cover two kinds of inputs because the input, which is a maybe posin, is either a nun or a posin. And these three examples also cover two kinds of outputs because the output is a Boolean, which could be either false or true. Let's look at the template that you might use to write this function. This is actually pretty close to the generic template that we've already written for processing a maybe posin B. There are two differences between that template and the more specific template for the hit hum function. First of all, again, rename the template to hit hum. And secondly, remember, there's a second input to this function. So in addition to the input B, there's also input P, the posin, that is the invader location. And if we're going to add an input P, we should remind ourselves to use P. In fact, P is a structure with two fields. So we might even remind ourselves to use both fields of P. And that follows for both the first case of the com and the second case for the com. Let me talk a bit more here as well about what it would take to follow this template. You might be inclined to think about different ways for the bullet to hit or not hit the invader. For example, here's just one of many ways to think about the problem. You know, if we want the bullet to hit the invader, here are four ways for the bullet to fail. Maybe the bullet is too far to the left or too far to the right or too far to the top or too far to the bottom. So maybe we should add cases to the con to handle these four failing to hit situations. So for example, uh, what does it mean for the bullet to be too far to the left? Well, the bullet X is passing X of B. Um, the uh, invader X is passing X of B. P. So if the bullet is going to be to the left of the parson, uh, then maybe we'll use left, less than to check, except we don't want to require the bullet to be exactly on top of the parson. So the bullet should be maybe, I don't know, more than seven to the left of the invader in order to be too far to the left. And in that case, the bullet should count as not hitting the invader, so we should return false. You might have other cases like this. For example, you know, maybe the case for being too far to the right of the invader will look like that. Okay? And you might have some more cases uh, where you know, uh, things are too far off. And finally, if uh, the, the bullet is not too far to the left, right, top or bottom, then maybe we've actually hit the invader. So you might write a con like this, which looks kind of different from the template that I had up on the screen 30 seconds ago, but it's still following the template because what matters in the template are two things. First of all, check if you have a noun or a positive because the input is a maybe positive. And in each case, use the fields of the structure. So if you have a posin, then use the X or use a Y. What we see here is a con that achieves both of these logical progression aspects of the template. So this would follow the template. But again, if you're not sure, feel free to literally follow the template. Okay, so pay attention to the logical distinctions among the input data that the template is expressing. Let's move on to the third of the functions you might have designed, invaders landed hub. How many examples are needed for this function? The answer is actually at least three, and here's why. 
we need examples to handle all possible kinds of inputs and all possible kinds of outputs. This input is a list of posits, and there are two kinds of list of posits, empty and comps. So we need at least one example where the input is empty, and we also need at least one example where the input is comps. What about the output? The output is a Boolean, so we should have some cases where the output is false and some other cases where the output is true. So that actually requires at least three examples. The empty case, which uh, always makes the expected output false, and two counts cases, one where no invader has landed and one where some invader has landed. Actually, you might even need to write a fourth example, and the reason lies in the template for this function. So let's talk a little bit about the template for this function. The template is very similar to the generic template for processing a list of posits input that you have written before. Um, we need to, of course, rename the template to the actual name of the function we're designing. And you might start to also think about what it takes to follow this template. Some of you may have written a definition that goes something like this. If the input is empty, then do something, return false. Or if the input is not empty, then we know there is a first invader to deal with. We could see if that invader has landed. So you might write some expression here that looks at the first invader to see whether it has landed. That's a question for a comp. That's a boolean. The wish list method might even cause you to design a different function. Let's call it invader landed. Huh? That checks whether a single invader has landed. That would be a good idea. You don't have to do it, but it will be a good idea. And that will be a nice application of the wish list method because we look at the template, we see process pattern, and we say, oh yeah, we need to process that pattern. Why not design a new function invader landed hub to process this single pattern? Okay, so if that invader has landed, then we might do something like returning true will be a good idea. And if not, then finally, maybe we want to process the rest of the invaders. And just as we rename process list of posits to invaders landed in the header of the function, we should rename it to invaders landed huh, in the body of the function as well. Rename every instance of the template name to the actual function name. Okay, so if this is my function definition, does it follow the template for processing list of posits? Yes, even though it has three count cases and there are only two cases in the data definition of list of posits. Because the, again, the logic of the definition is to check if the input is empty or counts. We could kind of clarify this logic by writing out the same definition essentially using an inner count. But we don't have to write this inner count out. We could just merge both the outer count and the inner count into a single count, and that will still be following the template. But if you're in doubt, feel free to write out that inner count. It is kind of clear. So do it either way. If you're confused about how to follow the template for processing a list, you can go back to an earlier video uh, called Template for Lists and see again how that works, including how the renaming of the template to the actual function works throughout the body of the definition. Let's use these three functions that y'all just designed to make the game a bit more complete. Before we wrote a big bang for the game, let's start by changing the initial world to one that has more than just a couple invaders in it. We can follow the data definition for what a world is. So I'm just going to copy that. For the list of posits, that is the invader list. Let's use the random invaders function from before and give ourselves, uh, I don't know, uh, eight invaders perhaps. Uh, for the number that is a player's horizontal position, let's begin by placing the 
player in the middle of the game horizontally, and because the game is 200 wide, that should be 100. Finally, for the initial bullet, let's have no bullet to start with. One thing that we could quickly do is to use the player function as a key event handler. So to do that, let's add a new line to the Big Bang that says on key, that means this is a key event handler, and the name of the function is player. Okay, we could already try to run this new Big Bang. It's going to be a little bit more exciting because there will be eight invaders like that, and I will even be able to fire a bullet. Now, one funny thing that you are starting to notice is, well, first of all, the game continues even when some invaders have landed because we have not used the other two functions. And also, uh, I, I'm not able to fire any more bullet. Why is that? Well, it's actually because there's still a bullet in the game. It's just high up in the sky and we can't see it anymore, but it's still there. So uh, that bullet that we can't see is preventing us from firing any more bullets. There's actually a problem that's caused because the definition of move bullet that uh, I made before is not complete. So here's the definition of move bullet from before. You can see that I only have two examples and the count only has two cases. I'm only dealing with where the bullet is none and where the bullet is an actual posit, but there's no case in either the examples or the definition for when the bullet is flying off the screen. So we need to add a new example to express this new situation. What if a bullet is off the screen? We have to give an example of a bullet that has flown off the screen. Uh, maybe the Y coordinate has become negative, and that means the bullet is too far off, it's above the top of the game. And in that case, we should move the bullet by getting rid of it. So we first add an example, and in fact, we can confirm that we've successfully added the example by checking that this test fails. We get a test failure, and that's a good thing because now that we see that a test fails, if we fix the test, we know that we've improved the program. Okay, so how are we going to fix the program? Well, we could do like this. So here's one way to express a fix. Maybe we could add a case to check if the y coordinate of the bullet is negative. So I could use less than zero to check for that. By the way, there's also a function called negative hump, which you could feel free to use, but whatever. Um, and in that case, we're just going to return make now. Otherwise, if the y coordinate is not negative, then we could get to the else case and keep the bullet around. This is one of those counts that don't look immediately like it is following the template for processing and maybe pausing, but it is because it's first checking if the maybe positive input is none, and if it's not, then it must be a positive. There are only two kinds of maybe positives. If it's not none, then it must be a positive. So here we're using the fields of positive to do things. If we really want to be clear that we're following the template, we could write an inner comp like this, but we don't really have to. Um, it, it's clear either way. Okay, so this here is another way to write the function that is more literally following the template for processing the input. Anyhow, now when we run the program, we get, first of all, the ability to shoot one bullet, and then after that bullet goes away, we can shoot another bullet. Still, the invaders are just landing and going through the earth and not ending the game and not being hit by the bullet either because we have not incorporated any functionality to remove bullets and invaders, but at least we can shoot multiple bullets now. Also, all our test pass. Okay, one quick thing that we could do to further complete the game is to allow the game to 
stop. How do we allow the game to stop? Well, in general, if we want a big band to be able to stop, we need to write a function whose signature is world to boolean. So here we can call this function game ends. Huh? And once we finish designing the function, we'll be able to add a line in the big band that says stop when game ends. Huh? So now we just need to see if an invader has landed or there is no invader. Let's write this function quickly. We need to give some examples. We need to give an example where the game does not end and probably two examples where the game does end, either because an invader has landed or because there is no invader. So w1 is an example where the game should not end, just some random game. Let's give an example where the an invader has landed. I could just write that world here. Uh, maybe the invader list is Here's a non-landed invader, just for fun. And here is a landed invader because the y coordinate is 300, which is the height of the game. So here's a list of invaders where at least one invader has landed. And we can make up some player position and bullet. Um, that doesn't really matter. Um, and if we pass this world to game ends how, we should get true because an invader has landed. By the way, this is one of the cases where the list of abbreviations that we learned about before would make it easier to write the example because instead of writing counts and counts and empty, I could use the list function to make a list of exactly two posits. That's a little bit more concise. But if you want to use empty and counts, that's also just fine. Let's write one more example, and that's an example where there's no invader left because hopefully we've hit all of them and destroyed all of them. And in that case, the game should also end. So again, you see that we need to write enough examples. We have examples for the function returning false and examples for the function returning true for different reasons. So now, we could start to write a template and then the definition for this function. This is a world processing function. So the template simply follows the usual processing of the world input. I could just type it in again here. We have three fields in the structure and we probably need to process some of them. The invaders are the most interesting one to process because it is complicated and also because the invaders are the main two reasons why the game should end. We actually know that we're not going to care so much about the player location or the bullet location in terms of determining whether the game should end. There are two ways to process the invaders because there are two reasons for the game to end. You all wrote this function invaders landed. That's one reason for the game to end. We could just pop that function in here. Another reason for the game to end is for the list to be empty. And that's the empty half function, another function that takes a list and returns true or false. And now we just need to combine these two booleans using this OR operation, which is going to tell us true if either of these or both is true. Let's try this out. We're running the automated test, but also running the big band that incorporates this new game and half function. So now I can fire a couple bullets. The bullets don't cause any invaders to be removed, but once any invader comes, to Earth, the game ends. You can see that all tests pass as well. Okay, so now all that remains is for the invaders and also the bullet to be removed when they hit each other. Some of you have already designed a very helpful function for this purpose. There's this hit half function, which checks if 
a bullet has hit an invader. But what has not been done is when there is a hit for the bullet and the invader to be removed. So let's next design the function for removing an invader when it is hit. So let's all, for the second exercise, design this remove invaders function using the hit harm function that we've already designed. And all you need to know about hit harm is its signature and purpose. You can do this exercise designing remove invaders even if you have not done the hit harm design. You just need to trust that someone has designed the hit harm function following the signature and the purpose statement. One thing to notice about the signature is that it takes a maybe parson and a parson as two inputs. So the first input is the bullet, the maybe parson, and the second input is the invader, the parson. So be sure you pay attention to the two inputs and their order. Be sure to use the hit half function, whether or not you personally designed it in the remove invaders function. Good luck and I will see you afterwards.